statistically speaking, there was only a 5% chance that this would happen today. And it happened. Honestly, I'm completely shocked. Are you ready for this? Now, here's what was the main headline on CNBC. Private job creation totaled a stunning 233,000 job ads in October, far more than expected as per the ADP jobs report. Wall Street was expecting about 113,000 job ads. So this was over two times as many as we were expecting. And I have to say, I am honestly impressed, even with a breakdown of these jobs. It says here, private businesses in the U.S. added 233,000 workers to their payrolls in October of 2024, the most since July of 2023, following an upwardly revised 159,000 rise in September and much higher than forecasts of 115,000. The service producing sector added 211,000 jobs, led by education and health services at 53,000, trade transportation utilities at 51,000, leisure and hospitality at 37,000, professional business services 31,000, and information at 7,000. Meanwhile, the goods producing sector added 22,000 jobs, of which 37,000 were in construction and 4,000 in natural resources slash mining, while manufacturing shed 19,000 jobs. The ADP report says, quote, even amid hurricane recovery, job growth was strong in October. As we round out the year, hiring in the U.S. is proving to be robust and broadly resilient, said Nella Richardson, chief economist at ADP. Meanwhile, annual pay gains for job stayers dipped to 4.6%, continuing a two-year slowdown. For job changers, pay gains slowed to 6.2%. Now, yes, I will acknowledge that October is like the start of the holiday season, so it's not su super surprising that we did add more than 113,000 jobs. I think 113,000 jobs, as per the estimate, was pretty low to begin with. So from that standpoint, you can argue that these were not super great numbers, but don't fool yourself. These were fantastic numbers, even if, let's say, the estimate should have been 160 to 180,000 jobs, you still blew away, theoretically, what the estimate should have been, if that makes any sense. Like, I am a bear. I'm not super excited about where equities are, generally speaking, and I'm even excited about this report. Now, does this green light a soft landing? Does this green light a end of the year rally for markets? Absolutely not. There's still a lot more information that we're going to get, even just here throughout the rest of this week. But this is a solid sign heading into the jobs report specifically on Friday. With that said, you do have to take the good with the bad. We did have some bad news today, if you want to call it bad news. The U.S. economy only grew at a 2.8% pace in the third quarter, less than expected. Analysts polled were expecting 3.1% GDP quarter over quarter. So you did come in about 0.3% less. This was about a 10% miss. Not really a, a big deal. 2.8% GDP is still very strong, but it is below the 3% reading that we had for Q2. So when you think about both of these data sets, what do I walk away with it? And I have to tell you, just, just to be honest between me and you, yeah, that ADP report is far better than the miss in GDP. You're still growing at 2.8%. That really doesn't matter. That ADP report was very strong. So on net today, the data was really good. Are not, again, acting very rationally. With this good data, you would have expected to see bond yields go up. They actually went down today, which furthermore confirms my speculation that bond markets are really unhinged. Maybe an easier way to put this is to say that the old relationship that we had between good economic data causing bond yields to go higher and bad economic data causing bond yields to go lower 
could be over with because I don't think the slight miss in GDP is enough to cause bond yields to to fall in regards to the labor market report today the adp report that showed things are just fine in the labor market i think markets are more concerned with labor market activity rather than did gdp come in at 3.1 percent or did it come in at 2.8 percent i do also think there is something else happening here in regards to the election and the pricing in of the quote trump trade I think markets were getting a little ahead of themselves, expecting runaway deficits and higher inflation and the Trump trade, right? Send bond yields up. That is the Trump trade. I, I think you're getting a little bit of a give back to that today. Kind of like you would see in a stock that just runs for no reason, runs on, you know, speculation or whatnot. Eventually, that thing slows down eventually people start to question am i buying this because i'm you know a believer in the company or i believe in the fundamentals or am i buying this because everyone else is buying it i think that's a little bit of what you're seeing today although to start the trading day there was more of this going on i still think that is you know happening today you could say this in simpler terms today is just a little bit of a give back to the Trump trade. Now, I believe the Trump trade is totally wrong. I don't believe tariffs will be enacted the way that, you know, is is being portrayed. It sounds great, you know, for for corporate America. Let's take from these companies that are shipping goods to America and and, you know, uh ripping off American consumers. The fact of the reality is Trump is just saying those things to create leverage in negotiations. You're not going to see these wide tariffs put on everything. That's just not going to happen. Now, Ray Dalio says today he is concerned about America post-election with both candidates that worry him. Specifically citing major geopolitical and election-related concerns, the issue of rising U.S. deficits, and how investors can best position their portfolios. Now, we did have some really bad news for AI stocks today. Supermicro plunged 30% as their auditor resigns after raising concerns months earlier. Ernst & Young resigned as Supermicro's auditor last week after raising significant concerns over the company's internal controls, board independence, and accounting practices. EY said in its resi resignation letter, it was, quote, unwilling to be associated with management's financial statements, which is probably one of the worst signs of a bigger problem. I mean, when your auditor is like, hey, I don't want to be involved with that. You guys got some real crap going on here. You're probably already up shit's creek as, as far as I'm concerned. And this is a big reason why NVIDIA is down about 1% today because SMCI and NVIDIA do a lot of business together. Now, do I think NVIDIA is, is at the whims of a similar situation? No, but that won't stop Wall Street from being fearful about such a thing. The bigger reason why I think Nvidia is down about 1% today actually has to do with none other than AMD, Lisa Su, which coincidentally is second or third cousins to Jensen Wong, the Nvidia of the the CEO of Nvidia, uh, is down about 10% today. Just following not impressive earnings. It's as simple as that. But this could actually be a good thing for NVIDIA, that NVIDIA is selling down a little bit, that AMD missed on earnings, because it will somewhat lower the bar for NVIDIA earnings. The bar for NVIDIA earnings is still going to be really high, but it'll make it a little bit easier to impress investors. I think one of the bigger issues today is Apple is down about 1.5%. While there is no company-specific news for Apple today, whenever you see weird selling or weird buying in a company right before earnings, it sets me off a little bit. It makes me a little concerned because with a company like Apple, with so many different investors invested in the company, you have to imagine that someone gets the reports before the rest of the markets. Think Warren Buffett, for an example, that had a lot of money in Apple, still has a lot of money in Apple, but has recently sold about $80 billion worth of Apple. It's totally not impossible that Buffett gets the Apple report before the rest of the markets. 
okay and this goes for other large firms as well i know that's not supposed to happen and it's very unorthodox to hear someone point that out like myself here in this video but it does happen the reason initially in after hours yesterday apple sold off from my interpretation was google had good earnings with really data center cloud if cloud if you will and with advertising apple doesn't have really either of those things to a larger extent it's, it's not built out the way that google is at least uh you know that goes for cloud and for advertising so it's kind of one of those situations where we now have a really good understanding of the advertising market Apple's not a part of the advertising market. Maybe it makes sense to buy Meta and to buy Microsoft before they report earnings instead of Apple. But a 1.5% decline on Apple leads me to believe there's something else there. And Apple is the number one component of the NASDAQ. So if Apple does theoretically have underwhelming earnings, that in and of itself is a problem. I also think it's a problem that Google is still up over 4%. It was up 7% in the beginning of trading. Microsoft is up 1%. Meta is up a half of 1%. Amazon's up 1.6% at the time of recording this video. But the S&P is down a tenth of 1%. So even though these big multi-trillion dollar companies are in the green today, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and Meta, you're still not able to have a green day for the S&P. Meaning that if these big tech stocks that are green actually do go red in the coming days, then markets are on some weak stilts here. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says we expect to buy up to 30 billion in off the run securities for liquidity support, really to try to support the bond market, which is part of the reason, again, TLT is moving higher today and bond yields are moving marginally lower. At the beginning of the trading day, this looked a lot better. At one point, 10-year treasury yields fell all the way down to about 4.20%. They're back up to 4.26%, now only down one basis point on the day today. So it's not really working, whatever the treasury is trying to do. Ryan Dietrich on X writes that October is historically the most volatile month. 2024 said, hold my beer, not a single 1% close up or down all month with only two days left to go. Over the past 50 years, that only happened in 2017 and 1995. That's it. And David Rosenberg is here to throw cold water on the GDP report today. He says half the growth came from the savings rate drawdown. Real disposable income growth weakened sharply to a mere 1.6% annual rate, then adjusted for the pre-Boeing strike effect on transportation equipment and government support and stripped bare the economy really only expanded 0.5% in the third quarter. Miracle or Mirage. Thomas on X writes, Q3 GDP growth came in at 2.8%, a touch below the estimate of 2.9%, while private domestic demand came in at 3.0%. Consumer spending was particularly strong this go around, rising at the fastest rate since Q1 2023, while residential investment, part of private investment, was weak. And Zero Hedge points out where some of US growth is coming from, and that is government spending. As a, per as a percentage of GDP, which is continuing to rise, aka deficits. And as reported today, overall PCE is at 1.8%, which Kathy Jones here says she is the chief fixed income strategist at, at Schwab Center for Financial Research at Charles Schwab, says it's well in line with the Fed's mandate. And David Rosenberg writes on X, another generous seasonal adjustment factor for ADP made the difference between the consensus estimate of 111,000 and the actual 233,000. Don't believe everything you see. Here on the day today, CNN's Fear and Greed Index is coming in at 59, which is still in greed territory, but falling quite a bit from where we were one month ago at 73. Even yesterday, we were at 60, and last week, we were at 62. The percent of stocks trading above their 50-day moving average is actually up today to 57.45%. 1.48% of all stocks are breaking above 
their 50-day moving average. And most of this has to do with the outperformance of the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 is up close to a half of 1% today. NASDAQ down 0.2%. S&P is down 0.12%. And the Dow is up 0.07%. The VIX is now back above 20, up 3.5% today. Option activity today in the SPY ETF, the main S&P ETF we all use to track the S&P, you have seen 115 different trades totaling $102.23 million with a positive order value of 71%. So it's actually pretty good today. Today in After Hours, we do have earnings from Microsoft, Meta, Coinbase, Robinhood, Sonova, Etsy, Riot, Roku, Carvana, and Starbucks. Tomorrow morning, we have earnings from Uber, Peloton, Merck, ConocoPhillips, SiriusXM, Altria, MasterCard, Estee Lauder, Kelanova, and Norwegian Cruise Line. And then tomorrow and after hours, we have earnings from Amazon, Apple, Intel, Atlassian, Eldorado Gold, as well as United States Steel. And then Friday, we have Fubo TV, Chevron, ExxonMobil, and Wayfair. So expect to get a lot more volatility in markets starting today and continuing throughout the rest of this week. Even considering we do have tomorrow's economic data, which we will get core PC price index month over month, expecting 0.3%. Last month was 0.1%, so the, the lower the better there, that's for sure. Personal income month over month expected at 0.3%, last month was 0.2%, the higher the better there. And personal spending month over month is expected at 0.4% versus last month at 0.2%, and again, the higher the better there. We will also get initial jobless claims expecting a rise from last week's 227,000 to 200. 30,000 and continuing jobless claims, which are actually expected to fall around 7,000. So not expecting too much there. Chicago PMI is expected to rise to 47.5 from last month being at 46.6. We have some shorter term uh, bond auctions. That's not really expected to move the markets and manufacturing PMIs out of China that come out at 9.45 p.m. tomorrow. And then on Friday, we do have non-farm payrolls as well as the unemployment rate and ISM manufacturing PMIs. So it's not just the earnings, it's also the economic data, and to a lesser extent, does the election start to get priced into markets? Do we start to feel the uncertainty of the election or do we not? That is an open-ended question that we just don't know until we see it. So let me know what you think about all of this information down below in the comment section. Are you bullish? Are you bearish on markets? I would love your thoughts down below. With that said, you guys have a safe rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.